right. Let's see where that thick, is thick, thick stunning. bubbles now. Yeah. Um, and then at the very end, we're going to add cheese. We don't do that until we're ready to pick it up. Okay. Uh, because what happens is if you turn the it on, the cheese can has a tendency to it's melt to the seize, bottom and, yeah. and, and burn. Right. So what we have going on here is a bolognese dish. You love bolognese. I love bolognese. I love to make bolognese. Goes a long way. It's great to freeze. Good company dish. My exactly. father loves it. Is he a big fan of the bolognese? He loves bolognese. Does he? Yeah, yeah, I love it too. But this is a bolognese that's a bit different. Uh, it's a bolognese in a white sauce, which is where I'm from in Italy, in Avellino. Okay. They, they, they tend to have almost like that Tuscany influence, that Milan influence, the North Italy, with white sauces. So, um, hey. Yeah, oh, this is going to be great. Very interesting. I've only had your traditional bolognese or my shortcut bolognese, which sometimes I use ground turkey in. What, is that the shortcut? Well, stress-free shortcut. Right, stress-free shortcut. <laughs> shortcut bolognese. You know, it doesn't have a lot of cream in it, it doesn't cook for hours, but it well, tastes like bolognese and it's great. Well, one thing I, I like about coming on your show, I like watching you, how you cook, is you have a lot of good, quick techniques. Uh, well, that it, it that should. Are we want to help people, right? We want to yeah. get them back in their kitchens. We want them to know that it could be easy, it could be fun. Exactly. There you go. All right, we're going to add the cream in. You notice I have some gorgonzola? I noticed that. We're I was wondering what dish that was going to go in. We're going to put that in at the end and fold it with these um, shells because this is a perfect pasta to use for this dish. Okay, that's great. You know, my sister is a great lover of steak with blue cheese or gorgonzola. Oh, yeah, steak. Yeah, so yeah. this may be something I have to save her a little taste of. Yeah, well, we know we both love steaks. I feel we ought to do a steak show. We should. We should definitely do it. Now, now, Barbara, we spoke about adding the wine mm -hmm. at the very end there, which we did. Now we're going to add a little bit of beer. To the bolognese. In the bolognese. I know that sounds a little bit weird, but wait till you taste this, this aroma. I think beer in beef dishes is great, actually. Yeah, ab absolutely. And we're just going to add, you know, just probably about a half a bottle of beer. You could use any ale you want. The darker the ale, the better the flavor. When right. Right. You know what's really good is beer when you do like chili or onion soup. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I don't like to drink it as much as I like to cook with it. You know, I mean, dry pasta I think can be really high quality, so there's nothing wrong with dry pasta. But fresh pasta is that lighter treat once in a while. The great thing about fresh pasta is it's lighter, it tastes fresher. But the great thing about dried pasta is it's always in the pantry, and so you always have a great dish. So you right. can always come up with a great dish. You're right. All right, so we're going to add the shrimps in there now. Okay. Oh, that looks good. We're going to blast it up. Blast it up. Blast it up. Beam it up. Beam it up, Scotty. <laughs> and we're going to take some butter in just there. Just a little butter. Just a little butter. Kind of brings it together. <laughs> and you take your uninfected spoon. That's right. Nice clean spoon because we don't want anything that's touched raw meat or raw seafood to go into the pan. Exactly. Especially if it's been sitting there a little bit by the heat. Yeah. And you just give this a second. This is like. Yeah, you know, it'll ready cook to go. in no time. Those shrimp will cook in no time. What I'd like to do is take our pasta after it's strained. Whoa. That is one plate of pasta. That is one plate of pasta. And what I like to do is just, if you could just drizzle a little olive oil over Sure. There. We can do that. This would be a great place to use that extra special olive oil that you purchased at your fine Italian grocery store or that you smuggled back from Italy in your suitcase. I like that, smuggled back. <laughs> in, wrapped in your underwear in your suitcase, right? <laughs> Everybody's got like those stories when they come back from Italy. How'd you get it in? Well, you'll never guess where I put it. I had my wig and I stuffed it in there. But it's, uh, I mean, the stories that you hear. Oh, the stories are amazing. But unfortunately, it's not that easy anymore because of some people that have really yeah. ruined it for yeah, us. Exactly. Because it's always fun. Oh, I got this in Italy. You know, I found it in this nice little town. The merchant was so nice, right? Yeah, we thought we were so bad smuggling like meat and cheese. Now everybody's like smuggling stuff that'll kill you. Yeah, right. It's like I know. It's a shame. <laughs> Woo! You gotta have a little bit. Little of heat in the kitchen. Gotta have a little feels like the restaurant. That looks fabulous. It smells, everything smells terrific. Well, I mean, the, the shrimp's got just a, a t tiny couple of minutes to go. Yeah, I think so. We're just going to strain this other pasta that we have here, which is the shells. You know, a great way to test your shrimp, if you're not sure if it's done, just break one in half. And if it's um, print, if it's opaque all the way through, you know it's done. Do you like seafood? I love seafood. Yeah. I wrote a seafood cookbook, the Diabetes Seafood Cookbook. Oh. 
for the American Diabetes Association. So I guess I like seafood. I hope I will get a copy of that. Of course. I love seafood myself. And you live near the water. Yeah, that's all right. I live right on the water. And, you know, I mean, the smell of mussels and, you know, even the clams and stuff like that with, with the seagulls bringing it up and dropping and watching Oh, it's so nice. It's, it's good. It I love that seagull uh, sound, too. Yeah, totally. All right, this is ready to go. That you see is the nice amazing. Thick sauce here? Yes. We got, we got all that nice, right. wonderful sauce. And that is amazing. Again, you don't want to overcook these shrimps. Can't either. wait to taste it. Just go right over the top of that, baby. Mm hmm. That's lovely. Voila. Very nice. Put that out at a party. I don't think it'll last very long. Well, I hope not, because if there's leftovers, it means it wasn't good. <laughs> That's right. Now this dish, <laughs> That's true. I like to put the pasta right, right in, in it. it. Yeah. Okay. Now we talk. So the pasta should be a little undercooked. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. It should be a little out that day. And then we take this gorgonzola cheese and put it right in. I mean, if you don't have gorgonzola, this dish doesn't make it. It doesn't. Okay. Has to have the gorgonzola. It's okay, tough. Jill. I'm saving you a little plate. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people over the years have put like uh, parmesan, uh, you know, other different kinds of cheeses. But the gorgonzola, as you're going to see, is going to take this thing together. And it goes perfectly with the beer. Yes. You know, it, right. It takes the beer to another level. I'm just amazed at how that is coming together and how you have just the right amount of pasta for that. Yeah. I guess, uh, you know, you eat pasta your whole life. You kind of get used to it. And then the Jumeli, I like to just throw right in the olive vodka. In the olive vodka. Yeah. Okay. So that pasta was cooked ahead. Right. Exactly. Left to, you know, left on the counter. So it's room temperature, but the sauce is going to heat the pasta. And there's nothing on that pasta. You don't want to put oil on the pasta. Exactly. Just let the sauce separate the pasta. And then we got the cheese. Nice. Wow. That You're looks great. Eating. What a picture that is. Looks great. You know, I tell you. It, I know you love food. It's such a passion. It like makes oh, it the is. world go around. It, it, it really is. Yep. It makes the world go around. I really feel sorry for people that don't love eating or don't love cooking. I don't quite understand it, you but know, they, uh, yeah. there's nothing better than a house full of people waiting for dinner, I think. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, they say some people uh, eat to live and then some people live to eat. Yep. You know? Well, you know, and you have to accept the fact that you might have a little five or ten extra pounds, but, you know, you're happy. Yeah. Exactly. The bottom line is, hey, listen, you got to live. You, you know, got to live. You got to enjoy live. life, right? I mean, even if you have problems like you're gluten free, you can't eat dairy, you're diabetic, right. there's still great foods. There's out there. still a lot of great things. I, I've yeah. tried actually for gluten free, I tried the corn pasta. I did just um, cherry tomatoes, basil, yeah. olive oil, and some fresh Jersey corn with the corn pasta. It's comparable. It was fabulous. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. Fresh ingredients, quality ingredients. I agree. You know, and, 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 I, and I'm glad too because you know, for people who really can't Look eat down. those types of food, yeah, we can lower that. For people who, who really can't eat those types of foods, you know, they have alternatives, and, and that's right. really good. Want a plate? Uh, yeah, we'll plate that up. Looks good. Yeah. Smells better. Can't wait to taste this. Oh, yeah. This almost reminds me of how I like the consistency of my macaroni and cheese. I like it soupier. Nobody makes macaroni and cheese <laughs> like you. Well, that recipe came from a good friend of mine. Yeah. Okay, so one, two, we now just, number three. Yeah, we just got a couple of seconds on this. We want yeah, this that's to be coming together really so thick, nicely. But if you have a spoon, you can kind of like taste it ahead of time if you don't mind. Yeah, there's some tasting spoons there. And just the sauce, you can, it's still a little, uh, you know, it's a little loose, but it'll come together in just moments here. Mm. You'll start to see the Oh, that's bubbles. amazing. Yeah, start and to you see know what? The gorgonzola is not really strong in there because you balanced it so well with all the other ingredients and all the other flavors. Exactly. I'm going to try the olive vodka since I have poo pooed olive vodka. <laughs> Go ahead. Go but I know this in. is going to be amazing. Oh. That is great. Okay, I take it back. I do like olive vodka, but I only I think I might only like yours. Okay, I can, I can, I can live with that. Mmm. The shrimp are cooked perfectly. Joe, this has been so much fun. I love these recipes. Thank you They're great. Please visit my website, stressfreecooking.com. I'll post these recipes. The best, I'll come as close as I can to rewriting these recipes for Joe. <laughs> Joe, thank you so much thank you for so joining much, me. Always, Always a, a pleasure. pleasure.
I'm Barbara Seelig Brown. Thank you so much for watching Stress Free Cooking. I hope you'll join me again soon, and I hope Joe will come back again soon. Oh, you know. <laughs>